Science has a way of snowballing. One discovery can lead to another. Years of discoveries led to our COVID vaccines, but what might those lead to? Last May, Dr. Anthony Fauci told me that it could help fight another virus that defined much of his career. Well, you know, it goes both ways, Joshua. In fact, the work on the structural biology and the structure-based vaccine design, working for years on an HIV vaccine, was extremely helpful in us getting a vaccine for SARS-CoV-2. Going back in the other direction, the platform technology for vaccines, the mRNA particularly, that proved to be beyond our expectations successful, we're going to start using that platform technology in HIV. So it's one is helping the other back and forth. Turns out Dr. Fauci was right. Yesterday, Moderna began clinical trials for an HIV vaccine. It developed the shot with the nonprofit International AIDS Vaccine Initiative. Like the COVID vaccine, it uses mRNA technology to teach our cells how to fight HIV. Joining us now is Dr. Robert Fullilove. He's a professor of sociomedical sciences and Associate Dean of Community and Minority Affairs at Columbia University's Mailman School of Public Health. Dr. Fully Love, welcome to the program. Thank you very much for having me. Glad to be here. This would be a huge deal if this vaccine works. Talk about how significant this would be. It, it, in a way, it feels like kind of the holy grail of HIV prevention for the entirety of this pandemic. When... Margaret Heckler, in 1985, announced to the American public that we found the bug that was causing AIDS, it was HIV. One of the things she promised was that in a very short space of time, we would have both a cure and a vaccine. That was 1985. Here we are in 2022, and it's finally happened. But it took a long time, and you're right, it was a technology developed for another virus, that produced the miracle that we're seeing right now. Professor, can you explain for us in very simple layman's terms what it is about this mRNA technology that makes it potentially applicable to fighting HIV? MR, this, this technology, let's, let's be simple about it, is one that creates a set of proteins that very much look like HIV to our immune system. It is going to produce a set of proteins that will have less of the genetic structure of HIV, so it can't cause an infection, it can't cause illness, but it will provoke an immune response. The immune system will look at what it thinks is an HIV cell, and it will start to attack it. And if this vaccine is successful, it will eliminate it and prevent the vaccine, the vaccine will prevent the virus from developing into the end stage of HIV disease, which is AIDS. So it's a big deal. We've been waiting for it for many, many years. In the 40th anniversary year of our discovery of HIV, we finally have something that looks like an answer. Now, I want to be clear. This, as a vaccine, and you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but as a vaccine, it sounds like it would be useful for people who are HIV negative. But if you're already HIV positive, we would have to find other interventions, although we do have strong medicines that are able to basically make HIV undetectable. So this would be more about preventing people from becoming HIV positive rather than treating people who are positive. That's correct. It's a prevention measure. It's not a treatment measure. We have some very active antiretroviral medications that are quite effective. They've been around since the 1990s. We will continue to use these, but we still average about 35 to 38,000 new cases of HIV every year. We're really targeting that as our most important uh, mission here to reduce the number of new cases and hopefully in my lifetime see the elimination of HIV altogether from the human family. Professor, how would you want to see this vaccine deployed? I feel like there are so many things about the fight against HIV, so many preventive methods that people don't know to this day, like things like PrEP, taking the daily medications, either Truvada or Descovy, to prevent HIV infection. I know a lot of gay men who have no idea that PrEP is, exists and it's been around for years. So it feels like even with the interventions we have, there's a lot of educating to do. There's a lot of educating to do, and clinically, it's very complicated. PrEP is not easy. You take a pill, but you have to take it at a certain time. 
We have to be really clear that it's present in your blood. We have to make sure, in other words, that its levels are effective to prevent HIV, if it enters, from creating an infection, an infection that's going to be problematic. What we're talking about now is a simple shot. It's an injection. It's very much like vaccines that we're already accustomed to taking. And now that we're in the era of COVID-19, where for all of us, vaccines have become a part of life, adding this vaccine to the list means I think that we'll be doing something that we're already accustomed to doing. And for folk who are at risk of getting an HIV infection, this really does mean that we're about to enter a new day. Before I have to let you go, Professor, suppose this vaccine works, suppose it clears all the clinical trials, gets approved, goes on the market. Where would you like to see outreach for this vaccine targeted first? Well, clearly in the communities that have been hardest hit historically by this particular virus, I'm talking specifically about men who have sex with men. I'm talking specifically about folk who live in marginalized communities, communities that are characterized by racial segregation. These are the places where we see the highest concentration of infection. And this would be the location for, I hope, what will be a very impassioned effort to make sure that this vaccine is distributed, that it is, that it is successful, that people accept it, and that it becomes exactly what we're hoping for, the dawn of a new day. Dr. Robert Fullylove, I appreciate you making time for us, sir. Thank you very much. Pleasure was mine. Thank you for having me. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.